people of the internet. Today I'm going to be doing a tag video and I was tagged by Mary Grace, so thank you. And I'll link her video below. This tag was originally started by Kelly Bear and it's the 54321 tarot tag. Now I've interpreted this in my own way slightly, so <laughs> I do veer off a bit in some of the sections. So the first section of the tag is five tarot decks. Now I've chosen to talk about five decks that I want to go deeper with. The first one is the Tarot of the Haunted House. I love this image. This is such a dark atmospheric deck. I actually have used this rather a lot. I've had it for quite a few years. What happened was I sort of overused it and decided that I was done with it. I put it under the stairs. We've got a cupboard under our stairs and that's where I put things that we want to sort of declutter or sell or what have you. And for some reason it completely escaped the declutter bag or the bag to sell things. And I was having a lot of thoughts about it sort of about a month or two ago and I ended up watching Sasha Graham's uh, video guidebook series, which is really excellent. And she talks about the stories behind these cards and I was like, oh, I really want this deck again. But I was like, no, I can't buy it again. That's silly. And <laughs> I had this urge to declutter and like tidy up my under the stairs cupboard because it's, it's quite hard to get into. You have to sort of crawl into it to tidy it. And I found this deck. I was like, oh, that's so weird because I was obviously very drawn back to it. And I, I found it again under the stairs. It seems quite fitting that it should be in a dark place <laughs> under the stairs in my house. It was quite funny. I'd like to go deeper with this deck because... I don't know, there's, there's something deep about it. I always found that the readings I do with it feel like they have layers. I love that it's based on gothic fiction. I was actually named after Daphne du Maurier's novel, Rebecca. So <laughs> I kind of have a love affair with gothic fiction and this is very much encapsulates that kind of feel. In Sasha Graham's video guidebook series, I'll link that below, she talks about some of the references for some of the backgrounds and a lot of them are referencing museums and historical buildings and beautiful sort of gothic mansions and it was just quite fascinating to see the amount of work that went into the art. So you have some sort of um, horror film references here, this is The Shining isn't it? But yeah, I want to go deeper with this deck. It's more to explore, there's more layers to delve into. And I love the storybook aspects. I'm very into fiction and I definitely read tarot through a storytelling lens. So yeah, that is the first one that I want to go deeper with. Next deck I'd like to go deeper with is this. This is The Dark with Tarot. This is also by Sasha Graham. Now, this one I've had for quite a long time. I think I bought it when it came out. It's rather beautiful in my opinion. I love the dark wood storytelling aspect to the deck. I think Sasha Graham really likes that storytelling aspect so that's probably why I like her decks. And I'd like to go deeper with this because again it's another one that I've done quite a lot of work with but and it's not that I haven't worked with it enough it's that I want to go deeper with it. I feel like there's more to uncover here. There's more study that we can that can be done. There's more Tales that can be told. <laughs> Stories by the fire, as it were. Fairy tales. And yeah, I just love the red that pops in this deck. It feels very fairy tale esque. This I mainly use for shadow work, but I do use it for more spiritual readings as well. And I find it tends to like to be read in that way. I find it likes to talk to me about my spiritual practices rather than just everyday matters. And that's kind of what I want to do going forward, you know, take it in that direction a bit more. The next deck that I would like to go deeper with is the Terror of the Witch's Garden. Now, I spent about five or six weeks working with this deck when I first got it. And I find it's more, to me anyway, it feels much more like a fantasy deck than it feels like a witch's deck. I mean, it does have some witchy aspects, but like this card, this feels like fairies, you know, an enchanted forest set in a fairy tale woodland or something. You know, it's got that lovely fantasy novel, <laughs> to me, aesthetic. And I definitely associate it with certain fantasy novels. I think Court of Thorns and Roses was the one I read with while I was using this deck and it felt very in alignment with some of these cards. I'd like to go deeper with this because I think I haven't done enough especially compared to the other two decks that I just showed. I haven't worked with this enough to know it very well. I know it okay, and it's a good general reader. Oh, she's so beautiful. 
sort of Sleeping Beauty. But I think there's more I can do with this one. In the guidebook, she's got these really beautiful spells and like uh, rituals you can do with some of the tarot cards, which I really enjoy, just because that is something I do. And I liked her unique take on using tarot cards in sort of magic and stuff. I'd like to spend a bit more time looking at the imagery and coming up with my own associations outside of the guidebook. Although I have obviously read quite a big portion of the guidebook and I would like to come up with my own associations. Yeah, that one is one I would like to go deeper with in the next few months. The fourth deck I would like to go deeper with is the Cirque du Tarot. Now, this one I talked about recently, actually, and... Oh, these are just all court cards. <laughs> all court cards. So this one, I owned it previously and rebought it because I felt like there was more I could do with it. This world is so magical and cosy, and I love the feel of... Because it's a circus, not everything as it seems. You know, there's a sense of glamour magic about it. You know, you have to look at the cards and see what's going on, you know, not just in the centre of the card but around it. So I'd like to work with this a bit more and go a bit deeper with it because I, I have quite a strong inner critic um, in terms of in my brain. <laughs> so I think I'd like to use this specifically in terms of like sort of confidence and you know being more compassionate to myself. <laughs> I think there's something I can learn from this um, and I really like the the spreads in the back of the guidebook, which are to do with kind of fear and confidence and self-belief, things like that. So I think that is something I could really work on, especially as an introvert. <laughs> the final deck I would like to go deeper with is, <laughs> of course, the one, the only, Pamela Coleman Smith. It's the Rider Waite Smith, the, the Smith Waite. So this one I just included because, <laughs> partly because I don't have loads of decks, but also because this one I just couldn't not include. It's one that I will be learning for the rest of my life. It's one of the first decks that I bought. I think my first deck was actually the Mythic Tarot, the proper one with the nice artwork. I don't have it anymore and it makes me so sad. But this was maybe like the second or third deck that I started learning with. And obviously the Rider Waite Smith system to me is tarot. And I just want to go deeper with some of the more intricate symbolism in the cards. Obviously, I do know what, what a lot of it means. I think I've been reading tarot for like, I don't know, 15, 16 something years. It's quite, I think I started when I was about 18, 18, 19, and I'm in my mid 30s now. There's always more to learn and there's always more to uncover and explore. And actually, one of the things that I'm doing at the moment is uncovering more about my personal kind of associations with the cards and what I feel certain things mean but I would like to know just here and there what some of the more occult symbols mean just kind of expand my knowledge in that direction but that will be just kind of over the next lifetime. <laughs> I have tried Thoth recently and I really didn't connect with it. The art is beautiful like you really can't argue with the art with the Thoth but it just isn't the way it read to me we did not connect it was way too obtuse and esoteric um even though i do like a bit of esotericism so yeah that is my final tarot deck of the ones that i would like to go deeper with so the next prompt is four books and i've chosen to interpret this kind of in my own way this is the only actual tarot book that i've chosen to show you but i'll talk about this first living tarot and this is by t susan chang and i apologize it's not all in shot i really don't want to move my thingy that holds my camera. <laughs> what I really like about this book and why I've included it here is because it really focuses rather than on traditional meanings, which is obviously what probably most of us learnt with or what I learnt with, this focuses a lot more on building up your own associations. This is directed more at beginners, but I kind of wanted to go into that aspect a bit more. Obviously I have my own associations over the years just from reading for myself and you know the odd other person. But I liked this idea of, you know, embedding it more into your practice of actively building up associations and, you know, even like quite weird, <laughs> obscure associations. I tend to add a lot of mythology and, you know, pop culture references to a lot of the cards. And I will often have quotes pop up in my head from other pop culture or books or, you know, famous sayings that I've remembered. It's like a personal association sort of bubble. For the High Priestess, I like some of the words she's chosen. Lotus, Moonstone, Cold Pale Blue, 
bow and arrow poppy sleep jasmine it's quite lovely and she gets you to do things like this it's full of lots of exercises the whole section on the card of the day i really enjoyed and i've worked through it quite a bit she also has a section if i can find it there we go on proverbs so you can pull a card and come up with your own proverb so hands that gather roses can tame lions which i quite like i haven't tried this yet but i will there's also one near the back which talks about tarot magic so this is the card of the day spell and i've been messing around with this recently it's quite fun you just kind of come up with a, a poem or a phrase to almost bring yourself into alignment with the energy of the card you've pulled especially if it's in a more positive direction and you kind of say this chant to yourself there's a table of contents so you can see there's a lot in here again sorry it's not <laughs> all in frame but there we go this is an excellent book and it's been really useful for me lately to just kind of build up more of my own associations it's been so long studying other people's meanings it's been fun to be like i want to do it my way <laughs> so that's what i've been doing this is my second book of the four books and this is where we kind of diverge with the tarot theme a bit although i will link it back to that a little bit so this is greek religion by walter burkett now this is an academic historical text so if i flick through it it's quite dense when i first got into hellenism i did read this whole thing I do have a history degree, so it wasn't too bad for me. The reason I've chosen to show this is because the way I read tarot, the way I look at the world is very much informed by my Hellenic practice. I'm a Hellenic pagan. It's a modern revival of the ancient Greek religion, and we use historical sources to help us reconstruct it. It's not reconstruction specifically, because I like the word revival because it. It's about reviving. You can't really reconstruct because there's lots we don't know. It's an amazing text. It's probably the seminal text on ancient Greek religion. It's got everything in it. And if you're interested in any form of veneration of any of Greek deity or being, you should really consider getting this because it goes into prayer formats. It goes into Moronic versus Chthonic. It talks about offerings. It's quite a complex subject. There's it's not just as simple as an offering, it's like there's a spond, there's a co, you know, there's, I'm probably butchering these words, I do not speak ancient Greek, sorry. There is quite a bit to research and there's some interesting practices that you can dive into. In terms of this with tarot, and the reason I'm talking about it is because this definitely informs the way I look at tarot and the way, and just my general life as well. I see the cards through a Hellenic lens at times, especially if there's certain symbols that represent certain things within Hellenism. I will interpret them that way and get back to mythology or praxis. And if I was to do a divination ritual to, I don't know, if I wanted to contact one of the gods for some reason, don't do it often, honestly, I'd probably go to ancestors first. But if I wanted to, you know, there's a certain way I would do that. I wouldn't just do it in a modern witchy way. I would do it in a Hellenic way. I would go through purification first, you know, wash your hands and make sure I'm clean, clean clothes. You know, I would burn frankincense incense because that is a very traditional offering, especially to an Uranic deity because um, the smoke rises up and Uranic deities are heavenly. Pray to them using the Greek prayer format that we have developed from mythology and sort of surviving Greek prayers. There's a very specific way I would do things and it is based more in like the historical way they worshipped rather than modern kind of practices, if that makes sense. It just informs how I would do rituals and I would do it through an Hellenic lens. And, you know, divination is part of that. The third book I'm going to be talking about is this one. It's called Greek Religion, The Gods, Goddesses and Heroes Handbook. And this is by Liv Albert. Sorry, it doesn't fit again. The reason I chose this is because Greek mythology is quite important to me and I grew up reading it. You know, as a child, I was very obsessed with the myth of Icarus. I was fascinated that he died. And this is like a I don't know, seven year old child it was like, oh, death. <laughs> Not every god or being is um, artistically depicted, but this artist, I've forgotten her name, Sarah Richard, she did the artwork for the, I think it's like the Midnight Mushroom Magic, whatever it was called, Tarot Deck. One with the mushrooms, but sort of dark. I have ordered, actually. Yeah, look, that's Hades and Persephone. So this is the same artist. 
this is based on a podcast called Let's Talk About Myths Baby, and she's she's not pagan or anything. She's literally just retelling the myths from a slightly more <laughs> comedic lens, and it is pretty entertaining. So she wrote this book, and the art was actually apparently based on Disney film Hercules, and the way they sort of animated that is quite bright colours and quite a limited colour palette. They did the same with this. It was very much limited colour palette and quite bright quite bright colours. Let's see if I can find one. Yeah, like this one. This is Theseus and Ariadne and the Minotaur. Now uh, here we have Icarus, one of my favourite myths as a child. I also loved the Minotaur myth. I loved that one. I can't remember some of the others. I think the Pandora's box I also loved. Quite obsessed as a child. I was a bit morbid, in case you couldn't tell. In terms of tarot, when I, as I said with the previous book, I do interpret some of the cards through a more Hellenic lens and certain symbols will spark myths in my brain. And I will, you know, they'll pop up and I'll interpret based on the myth or I'll interpret it based on a symbol that's prevalent in Hellenic culture, like the, I don't know, the Caduceus. They're just things that I would pull on from that body of knowledge. You know, Greek myth has been very important to me. Greek philosophy has been quite important to me. I studied it at A-level, a little bit at university. And yeah, it's just something that I can't really divorce from my life and from tarot. I wish they'd bring a deck out in this artwork of the Greek gods. It'd be so nice. Oh yes, Akateon. Getting eaten by his own hounds. Lessons be learned. Do not spawn a goddess when she's bathing. The final book I'm going to talk about is called Chaos Protocols, and this is by Gordon White. This book probably had some of the biggest influence on my spiritual practice. It's a chaos magic book, but it's through the lens of the more like folk magic meets the Greek magical papyri. You know, he talks a lot about animism. There's a really strong animistic bent to this book. He talks a lot about appeasing the goddess Fortuna or Taiki. He talks a lot about liminal gods and ancestor worship. There's a whole chapter called Armies of the Dead about ancestor worship and he talks about them being the best form of like luck magic. And the things that I really like and part of the reason I'm mentioning it here is he talks about forecasting and he talks about forecasting on a monthly basis using like a mixture of tarot and astrology and various other things and you kind of go back and like assess what's happened. You know nothing like groundbreaking but I liked the idea of using astrology and tarot together, of looking back on the month and seeing what transpired. It's, it's quite a good method. I have used it on and off over the years. But this is a fantastic book. The author is a chaos magician, but he definitely is also an animist and that really like permeates the book. I think he has written a book on animism recently. But yeah, I really, really enjoy this book. I've read it lots of times throughout the years. Sorry, I don't have my copy to show you. It's sort of away somewhere. Actually, rereading it at the moment but it's fantastic and I really highly recommend it. So the next bit of the tag is three terror spreads. The first one is the stop, start, continue spread. Oh, oh my god. Oh god. This is gonna drive me nuts when I edit. Oh god, they're not straight. Oh my god. Ah. Please be straight. Oh shoot. The first spread is stop, start, continue. This is actually a journal prompt that I know a lot of people use and you're meant to kind of draw out columns and then write stop, start, continue and, you know, kind of do it to help you achieve your goals. So I just do this as a spread now as well. And I can also theme it. So if I was talking about, for instance, I don't know, my health, I would do what do I need to stop, start, continue with in regards to my health or in regards to my work or in regards to my relationships, whatever it is I'm asking about. So yeah, stop, start, continue. The next spread I use reasonably regularly is the energy that's leaving me, Ooh. energy I'm currently in, and the energy that's coming in. So we have energy that's leaving me, current energy, and energy that's coming in. And that's quite a nice one as well. I do like three card spreads. <laughs> I think all of these are three card spreads. Okay, the final spread I use quite frequently is focus, challenge, action. Oh god, this is again going to drive me potty. Focus, challenge, action. I'd use this as like a weekly spread, like a weekly outlook spread or a monthly outlook spread. So what's the focus of the week or month? 
what's the challenge that's coming up in that week or that month and what action do I need to take for that week or that month and that's quite a good simple because <laughs> I like simple succinct minimal spread and that's what I like I don't like too many cards because I get overwhelmed easily and I tend to overthink so for me less cards equals more succinct more accurate answer yeah those are the spreads that I use fairly frequently the next part of the tag is two habits or two ritual paraphernalia that you use. I've kind of decided to mix these two together. <laughs> I've chosen to do one piece of ritual kind of paraphernalia and one habit. So the first is frankincense. This is obviously my sort of ritual item. Now, again, I use frankincense resin. This is actually fair trade and sustainably harvest. I got this from yeah Neil Yard's remedies, so they're available in the UK if you need sort of sustainable frankincense. Basically, I use this for offerings. Frankincense was a really common offering in ancient Greece, and that's the reason I burn it. I don't burn it every time I make an offering. I'll tend to use the frankincense sticks. I would actually like to get slightly better quality ones, but the frankincense resin. I will use during a proper ritual so as i was saying earlier about if i was approaching the gods for a divination question and i was doing the full proper ritual i would burn frankincense the resin but yeah that's the first thing and that is what i would use so the second thing is a habit that i have before i do a reading i will shuffle my deck to almost like dissipate the energy of the previous reading whether that previous reading was like a week ago or yesterday or a few minutes earlier i'll just give it a cursory shuffle and take sort of three deep breaths while i'm doing so and for me that clears the deck whoops it just removes i don't know the and for lack of a better term the energy of the previous reading it kind of dissipates it and the breaths while I do that just clear me. <laughs> and yeah, that's all I do. I don't do any sort of cleansing apart from that. I feel like for me personally, I would rather have a ritual bath for myself and cleanse myself rather than cleanse a deck. I mean, maybe if other people were touching my decks all the time, I would want to. But because it's just me, I'm all good. So the final prompt in the tag is one piece of advice or one card you would like to embody. So I'm just going to give a piece of advice because I'm an INFJ and we do that. <laughs> so my advice is to try and go deeper with your decks. You know, whether you have a lot of them or not many, you know, go deeper. How can you use your decks in a different way? What creative ways can you come up with other than just divination? You know, if you never do rituals with your decks, use rituals, take out the aces, use them as representations of the elements, make a talisman, use them for creative writing projects, you know, use them for shadow work, use them for journaling, have a conversation with your deck. If you don't believe in spirits and things, you know, do it with a part of yourself, have a chat with your inner child through the cards, path work, make affirmations up based on a card, go deeper, try and appreciate the ones you have and not just all the new ones, because obviously the new ones are fun. But having really deep knowledge, of, even if it's only one or two decks, I think that could just really enrich your practice. And especially if you use them in lots of different ways. So yeah, that is my advice. <laughs> I love this strength card. This is one of my favourite strength cards. Anyway, hope that was useful. Thanks for watching. I'm not going to tag anyone because I think pretty much everyone has done this tag. So I hope you have a great day. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.